Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. This video comes to you from a Western Kentucky farm that is harvesting 11,000 acres of double crop soybeans. There are a total of five Class 9, 543 horsepower, 400 bushel John Deere S790 combines equipped with 45 foot wide McDon FD145 draper heads harvesting the crop. Double crop soybeans are soybeans that are planted directly after the winter wheat harvest in the early summer. This way, the farm is able to harvest two crops off the same fields in one year. During the video, we'll take a ride up in the combine cab and visit with my friend Matt, who works at the farm, to talk about what it's like to run a large combine like this S790, and also what it takes to bring in 11,000 acres of soybeans. So let's head out to the field so you can see and hear all this farming action. coming across here. Uh, we're in a rather large field right here. Uh, this is kind of right by the home farm. We're not far from the shop and the bins. Yeah. Uh, pretty big block of ground broken up into several fields, but uh, this is your kind of first uh, section of beans out of 11,000 acres that you're cutting. How many uh, how many acres are right here in this block that you guys have covered so far? This, uh, this particular field we're in is uh, about 650, and then uh, going back towards the shop, uh, that field is 700, and then the one at the shop is 300. So, you know, all together, probably close to 2,000 or so all in this area. Well, makes it easy when you've got these big headers, you're not having to take yeah. them on and off. And yeah, we hop, some hop from one field to another. It's, it's pretty nice not having to unload it. So when, you're, when you have good running like this, and again, we can look out the front here and see some more of the combines coming across with the grain carts. How many acres a day does each machine on average cover? Uh, 150 to 200 probably. Um, of course we can't really start as early in the morning as we'd like to and can't run late so on a good day if you get 150 to 200 you're, you're doing good per machine. And what uh, what do you what time do you typically start in soybeans? Uh, it all depends on how heavy a dew there is and you got a nice foggy morning you usually don't get started to 10 11 o'clock in the morning so we try to be running by nine if we can but you know it all depends on the weather <laughs> certainly how on average how late do you run at night when you're probably about i don't know nine nine o'clock or so nine ten o'clock if we can if the wind blows you know it stays windy and stuff we can run later but most of the time by nine o'clock it's pretty pretty tough well, that makes up for the corn harvest days that start at 8 and go to, <laughs> yeah, get go to midnight, right? Get an extra two hours of sleep every day. It's pretty nice. That's good. Well, I, I appreciate the, the ride along. It's always great to see these combines. Sure. And uh, if people uh, people always ask, are you on YouTube? But, but you are on Instagram. Where, where can they find am, you on yeah. Instagram? Uh, my handle is I am Matt 567 uh, I'm not on YouTube because I don't have time for it. <laughs> uh, my YouTube appearances are on Big Tractor Power, so thanks for that. <laughs> well, we appreciate you sharing um, your your workday with us. Yeah. And if people want to see what um, Matt's doing here on the farm, he posts almost every day and also um, has a Fun Fact Friday. Yep. So it's definitely good to check him out on Instagram. And we'll take a look, another look at the uh, grain cart coming up here and unload.
when you're running a 45 foot head like this and you're unloading on the go, uh, combine has a pretty good reach with a 20 and a half foot unloading auger. Uh, not too many issues as far as the, the reach or worrying about where the cart is? Yeah, you gotta get a little close to the cart, but uh, you know, if we got a good cart driver, he, uh, he can usually keep it in line. Well, we can see also, uh, you've got a camera down here. Yeah, that allows you to see right where you're you're pouring it. Not as easy to see as pouring our wheat with all that dust. Yeah, it's kind of dusty out there. The lens gets dirty after the first time you unload too, so it doesn't really uh, stay clean. You take a look back here and actually see the inside of the bin, and you see all the soybeans flowing into the 400 bushel tank. Just about empty. And the grain cart's on its way. So soybeans are the lowest yielding crop that you harvest in the year. Uh, yeah. So you've got five combines out here with the 45 foot drapers and then how many grain carts are keeping you guys running? Uh, we're running three grain carts right now, yeah. In these big fields, really we could get away with two but the uh, in these bigger fields it's nice to have three because it's sure. such a long long travel time to the truck and all that but and when you're doing wheat and uh, corn you got four carts going to yeah. keep everybody yeah of course along. we run more combines in uh in wheat too so that's you got to have four well we can see uh, we're coming up here to the headland and the uh, combines on auto steer and matt's able to control everything over here with this joystick, and as we approach the headland, the combine's gonna beep to alert him that it's time to turn around. He's currently traveling at just under four and a half miles per hour, and I imagine that uh, is a good speed to keep this combine fed. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the size of the crop, too, and the material you're putting through it. Less wheat straw, you can go faster, obviously, because you're not putting half of the wheat crop through your combine, but. Here we can see the header. The header has these belts in it that feed into the combine and uh, carry the crop in without much uh, stress on it. And we're turning around to the next pass. So Matt just engaged auto steer and he doesn't have to steer it, it'll take over and guide itself right into the next 45 foot pass. You can get a better look at the bean crop out there. Uh, these are planted on 30 inch rows, Matt. Yep, 30 inch, uh, what they call ribbon rows. They're actually a, a seven inch wide row that's 30 inches apart. So they are, instead of being like a conventional planter, being all in a straight line, these are seeds are actually scattered out in a seven inch wide row so it gives them more room to to grow and they emerge better and yeah, they definitely come up through the wheat straw pretty quick compared they, to the, uh, the planters do. and the they single do. disc drills so how do you like uh, running this 45 foot McDon? it's a it's a good header i like it uh, i think we've actually traded for a couple deer headers for next year so we'll uh we'll have a good comparison see which one does a does a better job and all that but uh we've ran these mcdons for years and, and really like their performance they're good headers well it'll be interesting to see how the um two different brands stack up yeah so uh one question i know a lot of people always ask as we're going across the field here we can see we're running at a slight angle uh, to what the beans were planted uh, what advantage uh, does that give you as far as harvesting? Um, it uh, helps helps feeding it in the header a little better. It's um, you know as as you're going across the rows, it kind of sweeps the rows sweep across the cutter bar and keep the wheat straw going in at the same time. That's a, our main deal is because there's wheat straw down there, and you know it helps to go at an angle. It keeps the trash off the cutter bar. Even still, there's times where uh, like if we were cutting wheat and had to stop for any reason and you know put a 
pile of straw in one place or something, it'll tend to push up piles now cutting on the ground. So that's the main reason. Oh, makes sense. So yeah. overall, though, cutting, you know, these are double crop beans, so they came right after the wheat. There really yeah. isn't too much issue running the wheat straw and stuff. If you do the combine again, you're just cutting a little bit lower. Yeah, well, like, you know, cutting wheat, you're off the ground. Cut beans, you got to cut on the ground, but um, it all depends on your uh, your wheat too. Um, this year we had a lot on the ground, so we had to cut the wheat really low, which is kind of a pain when you're cutting wheat. But in beans, it's really nice because <laughs> there's not much straw down there this year, and it, it's cutting really good. And this type of header has pretty good flex to follow the train of the yeah. field. And yeah, it does. Follows it pretty well. So how how are the double crop beans uh, doing so far this year? Uh, we got pretty good yields this year so far, around 60, 62 bushel average uh, so far, and that's pretty good. Not bad. I, I think that our the later planted beans are going to be a little uh, worse because they took a took a hit during a drought in August, and uh, I think it kind of stunted their growth a little bit, put a hurt on them, but I still think they're going to do okay, but just not not 60. It's always the challenge. I mean, you, you start harvesting around the 10th of June, but it's yeah. normally the 1st of July before the wheat harvest ends, so you're, you right. know, the planters are running right behind the combines. And
I hope you've enjoyed spending some time out in the field with these big Class 9 John Deere S790 combines and in the cab visiting with my friend Matt. I'd like to hear in the comment section below this video what type of combine or combines that you're running in your farming operation and the crops that you harvest. If you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube where there are over 2,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you would like to see additional videos featuring this large Western Kentucky farm, continue to watch the video for a few more seconds to the end screen for a direct link to those features. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you.